All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the 10th session of Amalfia. I actually don't have really any announcements, so I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So, uh, today's session is going to start a little bit differently than usual. Uh, we actually do not have a log, because I wanted to make the time a nebulous sort of thing for this session. Uh, to catch you all up, uh, after getting repaired at a wear station, uh, the Amalthea is currently on its way back to Suthia. It's about a month's journey at maximum warp. Uh, actually, no, at warp 9. Uh, so, you know, it's taking you a little bit to get back to where you, quote-unquote, should be. Uh, with you is the Ophion, and uh, I believe also the Meiyuan may have come as well. Uh, in any event, it's been about a week, maybe two weeks, since you uh, left the wear station behind. And I'm going to open the floor to anybody who has any scenes they'd like to get out of the way before we uh, sort of dived into the quote-unquote meat of the session. So open floor. Uh, did anyone have any scenes they'd like to have uh, done? None. none free bar, free bar. Nope. Uh, quick check. Would mm -hmm. uh, the Mayu one have gotten its uh, breaches repaired as well? Yes. All right, wanted to make sure all the sheets were correct. All right. In that case, uh, we are actually just going to go ahead and start the adventure for today. So, uh, on the bridge of the Amalthea, uh, you know, standard alpha shift. Uh, not really a whole lot to do, uh, as you can expect as you're traveling. Uh, it's one of those things where you're just kind of making sure the ship doesn't blow up or, you know, things to, I guess, maintain the status quo. And uh, as you all are sort of sitting there, tapping away your console every once in a while, uh, Ensign Hamasi speaks up and says, Uh, Captain, uh, you might want to come over here and take a look at this. Yep, so Matherin gets up and he comes over to take a look. All right. So when you uh, walk over and look at what Hamasi is looking at, you see that there is a very very low power signal coming from a system that's maybe about five ten minutes uh out of your way and what strikes you as interesting is that this signal is repeating so either it's something like a, a cyclic uh stellar phenomena or it could actually be an intelligent signal and repeating suggests a distress beacon possibly Hmm. Five to ten minutes off. How long have we been at warp? Uh, just kind of asking so that he has an excuse to go, yeah, that's a fairly long time at warp. Let's drop out to repair and, in the meantime, investigate. And uh, I guess I'll do Duval, uh, since he's out today. He says, of course, sir. Dropping us out of warp and navigating us to investigate. All right. So, uh, the Amalthea and her little flotilla uh, come out of warp. And immediately, uh, Hamasi is running a scan to try and find uh, where the signal is specifically coming from. Uh, so if someone could pull up Hamasi's sheet, uh, I need Hamasi to roll me a reason and science. And if someone could get the Amalthea's sensors and science, which since you have repaired all your sensors, you can now actually do. I'll get the Amalthea. No one else is. I'll do Hamasi. Uh, the What's difficulty her here is a zero, and her role is a reason science. All right, already got an assist from the ship. Uh, it doesn't look like she has a focus, just spatial phenomena, subspace mechanics, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, I would say that this is technically activating her, so you could give her a focus in targeted scans or something along those lines if you so wished. I'm going to give her the more general sensors focus. Okay. Sensors operations. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just going to take threat for that complication. So yeah, you start off with two momentum. And, you know, Hamasi looks at this, uh, looks at the signal, looks at her scan, and says, Huh. Well, sir, uh, you're going to want to see this. It's, uh, huh. 
and she you know kind of moves whatever she's seeing on her console up to the hollow screen and all of you on the bridge are going to see the following and give me one moment because there's a jet flying overhead wow this is understand. normally i do not understand human guttural communication but that is indeed a huh what does that smell like? <laughs> Confusion. All right, sorry about that. Confusion uh, and fish in the microwave for some reason. Oh god. <laughs> um, but to describe for you know people who may not be able to see what's going on, uh, what appears on the view screen is a collection of massive chunks of ice and rock, and the view screen zooms in once, twice, and then you all spot what you're seeing on roll twenty at the moment. It's a it's almost like a beautiful ice sculpture. It's a snowflake uh, type structure with a hollowed out core. The inner diameter of the opening is large enough to comfortably fit the Amalthea sideways with room to spare, which means it's it's got quite the uh, hollowed out core in the middle. Uh, along this sort of inner ring are a series of airlocks, windows, and other signs that this is in fact a gigantic station carved out of the ice. And Hamasi sort of highlights an area of the uh, the structure and says, I think the signal's coming from more or less around there, Captain. There he is. Does it match anything we have on file? Uh, checking... no. I have nothing to compare this to. Hmm. Only the one signal source. That is correct, sir. Uh, it's hard to get a bead on it. Uh, unfortunately, it appears the crystalline lattices of the surrounding ice are preventing me from getting a solid lock. Uh, I should also say, sir, that this means that transporters will also likely not be an option. Hmm. That shuttle it is. Let's send, let's send a team over to investigate. Pre prepare one of the Argos. Very good, sir. Uh, oh, uh, real quick, sir. Uh, I'm also showing that the interior temperature is about 94K. Or, uh, well, what's what's that human math thing? Uh, 179 centigrade or 295 Fahrenheit. Uh, negative, of course, for both the centigrade and the Fahrenheit. So I believe everyone's going to need an environmental suit. Mm-hmm. Let's get a survey team in there, see what we can find. All right. Uh, just quickly, what were the real page has the rules for the support character uh, increases when you, when they act? Uh, somewhere around 135, I believe. Thanks. But, yeah, uh, if you are sending over a shuttle, I do need to know uh, who is going on the away team. Um... The Ophion would like to hail and uh, volunteer the support of Zeb, his uh, security his talent. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Rosado is happy to go along. All right, so I have Zeb. Obviously, Rosazo is going along, though I do have a question, Jester. What the hell does an EV suit look like for a Horda? I imagine they just spray them with a little bit more Teflon. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very oh. interesting image yeah that's that's a very interesting image all right cool all um, right so I'll, i have zeb i have rizazo uh who else is going uh uh probably gortex will eat it okay gortex coming along if prayer is in form, the people supporting go. characters on the Ophion. all right prayer is coming along and then yeah mirthrin it's whoever you want to play yeah, good question. I will say that right you... now you guys are missing someone with engine a engineering focus. Right. You know, the Nixie has probably been on the ship long enough that she has her own custom environment suit. Oh, most definitely. So if you want to run Zenixia, Zenixia it shall be. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So uh, the five of you uh, pile into one of the Argo shuttles, and you fly over to begin trying to dock uh, with 
the structure. Now, I do have a question. Um, who is doing the actual flying here? Probably Gortek. Okay. So, Gortek, uh, I would like you to roll me a insight and con at a difficulty of one to see if you can find a, shall we say, an opportune or a a, a docking ring or a, a airlock that feels right, if that makes any sense. Okay. I'm okay with the con part. The insight part, I'm not really okay with. Um, all right. And, um... Helm operations? Helm would operations that a... would apply. Right. Of course. Okay, so I'm going to take threat. So you do succeed, which means that you navigate the shuttle uh, very gracefully up until one of the airlocks. And thankfully, uh, you actually don't have to do anything because the structure automatically responds to your presence by extending its own sort of docking gantry slash support uh, umbilical and you do hear that the pressure uh, is hissing on the other side of the shuttle's airlock and we weren't able to scan the inside of this for life signs and such before we got here correct correct um, and prayer came with us prayer did yes, come with you okay um, Gortegel once it's docked and turning around in the, the pilot's chair Doctor, would you see if maybe we can get a scan now that we're on top of it? I will see what I can generate, sir. All right. So, Prior, what are you looking for in particular? Um, signs of quote unquote intelligent life, complex uh, life. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that this will be a reason medicine, and then I have a further question. Are you using a tricorder, or are you using the shuttle sensors? I'm going to attempt it with the shuttle first to see be if being close it in proximity will add anything to the sensors. Okay. Uh, in that case, if someone else could roll me just a d20, your target number is an 8. Alright, so now help from the shuttle. And the difficulty here is going to be a three. And the role was reason medicine, is that what you said? That is correct. Come on, 20. I'm going to burn one of our momentum for a third die. Okay. Sounds okay. good. And sensors operations as a focus? Most definitely. Nice. nice. Wow, almost a stark contrast to us on the Kairos yesterday. Oh, God. So we got two momentum out of that. Yeah, you got two momentum. Uh, so good news, bad news. The good news is that you are detecting that your environmental suits will be able to handle the environment on the other side. The bad news is you're not detecting any signs of life or at least anything that would indicate that, you know, you have people or really anything waiting for you on the other side all right sir i got some good news and some interesting bad news i guess that seems to be the going norm for this fleet go ahead doctor good news is our environmental suits should hold up the environment is cold but shouldn't pose a problem interesting news I can't find signs of any complex life as we know it. Nothing silicon-based, nothing carbon-based. So either the station's running automatically that the gantry came out to the shuttle, or there's a type of life that we don't know about on here. Interesting. Well, I uh, hope you're up to date on your xenobiology. Um, uh, Lieutenant Rosazzo, uh, you and I out the door first. Hi, sir. All right. I'll take it Oh, I miss Zeb's accent. Oh, oh, speaking of Zeb, make sure that you reset your stress. And yeah, make sure everybody that your stress is at maximum. Uh, because that may become interesting later. May, as he stacks threat from complications, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just saying, I've uh, on the Akagi, I've never had a character that I was worried was going to stress out and 
Oh, it happened. Oh, yeah, it happened. Phasers on area is not nice. All right, so uh, yeah. I'm going to move I, us. I, I, out of curiosity, like, she, she's not, like, full-on telepath, but is mm. Zinixia getting any weird vibes? Ooh, you know what? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, let's say roll me a challenge die, uh, and if you get All an right. effect, I will answer that question. All right, so yeah, Zenixia no. is not so making up anything. it's just a bit of a weird, creepy place. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, as you all uh, enter the station, I will put you on this map and give you a little bit of a descriptor. So, uh, as you enter the structure, the air is frigid even with your environmental suits. Like, you know, obviously EV suits are rated for, you know, the void of space. But even then, it, the cold is somewhat leaking through. Uh, it's uncomfortable, but manageable. Uh, what you're seeing is that there's sort of this frost that covers the walls, the floors, and the ceilings, all of which seem to be designed for quote-unquote normal humanoid standards scaled up twice. So the corridors are bigger, the ceilings are higher, and in general, it just seems to be for bigger life. And what little illumination is present comes from lights that are encased within ice. Now, the good news is that between it and your suit's lights, you're able to navigate without issue. Well, mostly, anyway. And as you enter the uh, other side of the station's airlock, you are in what is basically an open atrium that is almost like a cavernous uh, thing of darkness. Uh, that is being pierced by your flashlights. Don't like the look of this. This is fascinating. Uh, by the way, since I introduced Zab this thing, I'm giving him a talent. Okay. Uh, pack uh, tactics. Alrighty. <laughs> I, 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 while I have no eyes, I do sense infrared light. This place is very disconcerting. It is darker than I am used to. Hmm. All right. And because I find it funny, I want everyone but Rosazo to roll me a fitness con at difficulty two, please. Uh oh. Uh, what would be applicable focuses, if any? Do you have balance as a focus or ice skating as a focus? Nope. I'm uh, first call the tech scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, contact with the ice, right? I know there was a picture somewhere of Klingons playing hockey, but um... that was in the, uh, the the Beta Quadrant book against Andorian. Because because why not? All right, Andorians play missing. hockey. We're like, let's play that. Okay. So, Zenixia and Gorteg, uh, you know, you start to take a few steps into this place when it's a little bit funny for Zenixia because like a snake on uh, satin sheets, uh, she starts to lose traction and just starts slowly spinning in place. Uh, Gorteg, oh, you have the envious position of stepping forward twice and then falling on your ass. And you will and take you a grand total of... Uh one damage, and to add insult to injury, you hear a very low hiss coming from the rear of your suit. <clears throat> oh, uh, I'll be over in a... Uh, mm, hang on a second. And you see, she sort of like does like the sort of snake man, sort of side to side, try to move, and she just isn't moving forwards. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of looks, roll, down, roll, looks down puzzled. Yeah, I'll uh, pull okay, out. Okay, um, I, I, I can figure this out. I'll pull out one of the patch kits and mm -hmm. hand it to prayer and try to get myself back to standing. Okay, you can do so. I'm mostly just being funny because, you know. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good with it. It's just I, I knew one of us would have a hole in our EV suits. I just knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Kind of need you on your feet, Commander. Yeah. Yeah, about that. I will use my surgical skills to put the patch on perfectly. All right, roll me a control and engineering uh, difficulty of one. Uh, if you have anything related to repair work or patch jobs or jury rigging, that would apply. N uh, emergency medicine? 
Nah. <laughs> nice. While they're doing that, Zed would like to uh, do a perimeter scan with his tricorder and search for uh, life signs or body heat, anything like FLIR kind of like deal. Yeah, I got you. Uh, well, the good news is that Prier, uh with two momentum uh, from that roll, I will say if you give me one of that momentum that you just got, uh, not only is gore suit completely sealed, but it will not be in danger of rupturing in the future with future impacts from the ice. Well, you know, I unless like he, like, slams into it, but, you know. I like that idea. Not having to worry about being uh, ice-penetrating uh, one of our suits is a good idea. I I also like this idea. Mm-hmm. All right, Remember? so... Uh, uh, around this point, Zanixia sort of figures out a setup where she basically sort of just crouch kneels on her tail and uses her lower pair of arms to scoot around while her upper pair of arms hold the tricorder. <laughs> I'm just looking around amused. Oh, this is everything I wanted. All right, so Zeb, to answer your question, uh, I was going to let you do a roll, but since you're sitting at four momentum, I'm going to say that your scans, uh, same thing that Prier did earlier, you're not detecting any life forms, at least none that your tricorders are configured to recognize. All right. Looks like we're alone here. What's All the play, right. Commander? Uh, let's push forward. Probably and... moving to somewhere with stairs. I stairs. I mean... Now I'm in trouble. No, um, uh, Zenexia, have you ever seen what happens to stairs that have ice on them? It's even worse than what just happened to you and I. <laughs> and to be, yeah, the stairs, stairs are probably going to be right. gigantic anyway. Um, but yes, we should push forward and learn everything that we can about this uh, structure. Okay. So, uh, um, I would like, uh, uh, let me ask this. Who among you has the highest science score? I'm thinking it's probably oh, really Prier, bad. but... Wouldn't I be have Zeb. Uh, I've uh, got a three. One, two, three, not it. Not it. All right, so Prier, what is your science score? Four. Four, okay. Uh, Zenixia can assist Prier on this, then. Uh, mm-hmm. Prier, I would uh, like you to roll me a reason and science. And Zenixia, you're going to be assisting with a reason engineering, actually. And the difficulty here is a two. Would any of my focuses apply? Uh, if you have anything related to uh, signal focus or anything related to, um, I guess, investigative techniques, then yes. I have research methods. Uh, not uh, quite, unfortunately. Not- Okay. Uh, I've got archaeo technology. That will definitely apply. Oh. Ooh. Oh my. Ooh. Okay. So unfortunately, even though Zenixia crit, uh, Prier did not score any successes. So that's going to be a complication. And I'm just going to take threat for that complication. Um, oh my. So the good news is that between Zenixia and Prier, uh, you are able to get a very, very faint signal of a greater power source, and you sort of take charge and start leading the away team in a direction. And as you traverse... Uh, this way, like, just sort of pushes off from one of the walls and just sort of goes lazily sort of circling around like a hockey puck as she goes down the corridor. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, you guys proceed through this cavernous area into a grand sort of corridor, and as you're proceeding along this corridor, you see that there are these very strange-looking blocks of ice. Uh, it's almost like if someone took a marble sculpture of, say, some unknown creature or some unknown design, and then encased it in ice. So, you're seeing these haphazard shapes and curves that to you, don't really make any sense. And they sort of line this corridor as you continue. Never been one for art. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't look ominous at all. Could I Uh, uh, spend the momentum to create an advantage? What would the advantage be? 
I'd like to configure my tricorder to be a motion detector to alert us if anyone enters a certain radius. That's okay. not us. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you spend two momentum, I will let you have that advantage. What do you guys think? Sounds good. Sure. Yeah. Very good. All right. So this grand corridor eventually leads you to what is almost like an annex, or at least a place where a bunch of corridors sort of branch off from one another. And at the center of this annex is a almost a full column of ice. And important for you guys is that in the middle of this column of ice appears to be a flickering console of, uh, of a computer terminal or some form of computer interface. Uh, the now problem that, is, is that it's encased in ice. Now that to me looks like a central control computer. Well, uh, let's see if I can help you take a look at that thing. And I will take my uh, phaser, set mm -hmm. it to the lowest setting, and start trying to melt away some of the ice on that uh, control panel. And anticipating this, I have an extended task for you all. Hooray! So, uh, this is a magnitude 3, work track 12, difficulty 4, resistance 1 task. Uh, the reason the difficulty is so high is because if you roll complications or if you're not careful, you could inadvertently damage the uh, computer interface itself. Uh, the good news is that you're not under a time constraint, or at least not one that you're aware of. Um, and I will say that up to two people uh, can work on this. So basically one person primary rolls and one person assists. Uh, the default role for this is going to be a control and a security. And uh, I just need to know who's taking the lead and who's assisting. Uh, Zeb can assist with a wide beam, low power phaser. Um, uh, Zanixia can probably assist by sort of just monitoring the temperature of stuff. Um, I mean, I can take lead. My control security is 15. With Sounds Android good. and focus. What about, uh, what about Rizazo? I'm curious to know what their score is. In, sorry, which? Uh, control and security. Oh, probably. Uh, yeah, it's like 15. Yeah. Mine's a 14. So it sounds like Gore-Tek and Rizazo would be the best ones to do this. All right, I'll take up guard and watch the entrances and exits. Okay. Eyeing these sculptures. Prayer will, sure uh, Pray will take scans of the sculptures. Okay. Want me to take point or assist? Go ahead and assist. I'll take point. Zeb turns to Prayer and says... I'm getting that tingling in my second stomach. Not a good sign. All right. So Gorteg. is Gorteg or is Zeb doing the actual roll? I think it was Gorteg. Yeah, it's Gorteg. Yeah. Gorteg was listed, uh, yeah, was leading and Rizazo is assisting. Yeah, okay. Just okay. making sure. Hard to see. Nothing here is giving off infrared light. Whole place is just black. Um, no, do you have I'm hand not. phasers as a focus? Yes, of course I do. Then there you go. No, I was uh, wondering whether or not to spend a uh, momentum, but we'll see what I roll without it. Uh, you rolled Wait. control science, but you said what you have a 15, hell? so... That's, that is not what I clicked on to have it roll. Let's try this again with the actual appropriate roll. What the hell was that? Is this is a difficulty four, though. So yeah, it is a difficulty four. Um, so uh, what happens as Gorteg and Rosazzo begin trying to, you know, sort of phase open or phase uh, melt the ice? is that the phasers are having a really tough time at the low power setting you have at the moment. Uh, you can certainly try again, uh, but you're going to have to do it at a higher power setting, unfortunately. Okay, I'll give that a shot. 
Okay, and what I'm going to say here is that the complication range has now increased to a 19 to 20. All right. And you do have two momentum at the moment. Remember, it is a difficulty four, so you may wish to spend momentum and or threat. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to. Um... Tell me how many. Yeah, I'll spend both momentum and I'll give you a threat for the for two extra dice. Roger that. Zeb is standing off with Prier as he scans the sculptures, kind of keeps an eye on the. There we go. But also curious. So that is uh, six successes. So you get two momentum. And yeah, uh, I would like you now to roll me seven challenge die, Gorteg, and remember it's resistance one. Okay. Very nice. So, uh, you will be doing seven work on this. Uh, do you have uh, any focuses that would apply to extended tasks? Don't. No, I don't. Okay. But hey, I mean, seven work done is still enough for one breakthrough, which lowers the difficulty to a three, and you've completed more than half the work track, so really, if you do... Uh, six work before resistance, you'll complete the extended task all at once. Uh, however, you know, as Rizazo and Gorteg, you're actually finally making process, uh, or progress, not process. Uh, as you're making progress, uh, Zeb, because you specifically created the advantage, your tricorder is picking up movement. Uh, this movement is coming from very small objects, maybe about the size of a soccer ball that are coming from sort of beyond the walls. Uh, Commander, we've got contact with something. I've got movements just outside the bulkheads. And I've got my phaser out in the other hand, and I'm kind of covering the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a number? Lots of them. Lots, just about, about the size of a, a small sphere. Wonderful. Uh, like egg? Well, let's hope that whatever they are, they're controlled by this panel. So uh, keep an eye on them. Uh, you too, Doctor. And uh, uh, Rosazo, let's see if we can get through this this time. All right. H hope you've been doing your phaser training, Doc. Oh, don't you worry about me. Um. And for the roll again, I'll do the same thing. I'll spend the two momentum we have and one threat to okay. get me two extra dice. Okay. The difficulty is three, so it is a little bit easier. Okay. I'm, I'm still pointed in the right direction, am I? You are. In case. Nice. Very nice. Oh, so that's a four. grand total of, I count, four momentum on that. Very nice. All right, and yeah, Gortag, roll me another uh, seven challenge die, please. Okay. All right, yep, that's enough. You not only uh, <laughs> ice the extended task, but uh, you are able to completely free the uh, console uh, from its icy exterior. However, uh, before you really can do anything more, uh, Zeb and Prier you spot that from hidden recesses in the wall, uh, out come these little, uh, well, I say little, these soccer ball-sized, uh, what are probably drones of some sort, uh, that come floating out into the frigid air. And there's about three in all. And they're just sort of uh, listing there in the air, sort of, just sort of, you know, hovering there menacingly. I put my blast visor down and pull out my lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the next year I'll sort of put up a tricorder and start trying to scan one of them. Okay. As will I. The second you start trying to scan, one of them opens fire. So, so we are going to uh, enter into our first ground combat of the campaign. So let me clear the initiative order here. And put some of these, put all of you into turn. 
And then add turn for the drones. Very nice. And then move it so that the people on the stream can see. All right. So uh, the drones are going to get the first attack. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and roll for them, and let's see what happens. Uh, the good news is that uh, Drone E, uh, it fires out this very high-powered laser, uh, but the good news is it misses you completely. Uh, it was aiming for a spot somewhere between uh, Gorteg and Preer, but as I said, misses completely. And it is now the player's turn, so any one of you can act. Hmm... I'll go. I'll go. Okay. What are you yeah. doing, Prayer? Uh, I've my phaser out and ready already, so I'm going to aim and fire. Okay. Uh, just so I know, uh, which drone are you uh, shooting at here? Uh, let's go for A. Okay. And I'm going to bring in my tri joint trill talent and say that my previous host, the third host of the Prayer Symbiote, who was an exo of a Nebula class during the Dominion War, would have had a focus in hand phasers. Okay. Uh, remind me, does that last for the scene or for the adventure? Uh, it's once per mission you may declare that a former host has uh, an area in that. Uh, it's for the remainder of the scene. Remainder of the scene. Okay. Noted. And yeah, and uh, if you're shooting, that's going to be a control and a security. The difficulty is a two. And can I assist him using my talent for call-out targets? Uh, remind me what call-out target specifically says. Upon assisting a character making an attack, either mm -hmm. using either the assist attack, the direct task, or some other means, the helped, char the helped character generates one bonus point of momentum. If they succeed, bonus momentum cannot be saved to the group pool. Okay, I will say that uh, if you do a presence command for me, Gorteg, uh, I will let it happen. Okay. Um, and then, because I like piling stuff on, I also have decisive leadership mm -hmm. in a conflict whenever the character performs the assist task and would then pay two moment. Oh, that's keep the initiative. Yeah, I was going to say, um, so this isn't technically the assist task. Uh, this okay. is just you saying, hey, shoot that one kind of a thing. Presence and command, you said? Presence and command for you. And prior, you're rolling a control and security. I'm going to use a, one of our momentum for a third die. Okay. Um, and uh, lead by example as sure. a focus. All right. So uh, you guys get two regular momentum and one bonus momentum. And yeah, uh, you can go ahead and roll me damage on your phaser. All right. Uh, I'll spend the bonus momentum on piercing for resistance. All righty. Sure enough, uh, you quite literally uh, follow Gortex's lead and shoot that one, as it were, and the drone goes up in a sparking ball of, uh, well, sparks, and it falls to the icy deck plate, uh, completely incapacitated. Uh, up next, uh, with you having gone, uh, I'm going to spend some thread here to say that uh, not only is Drone F going to be able to act, but as it does so, uh, two more drones come out from the walls. All right, so Drone F is going to fire at you, Prier, because you're the only one who's actually opened fire at this point. So let's see what the drone rolls. Apparently the drone can't roll very well. Uh, so again, uh, a laser sort of shoots past you and just completely misses you. And it is the player's turn again. I would kind of like to go now. Since... Right. Yep. Uh, Rizazo won't move or turn at all. Mm -hmm. as you can see at 360, and his arm will just kind of swivel in the opposite direction on a joint. Okay. Aims carefully, taking the aim under action and firing at... Well, Drone F, because that's probably the one he can see. Okay. He can see it, since it just fired a phaser, and therefore is lit up. In... Yeah, I think that's fair. So yeah, uh, control security from Rosazo. The mm -hmm. difficulty currently is a 2. 
Uh, also, Dead Eye Marksman is a talent. So when I take the I'm A minor <laughs> action, I reduce the difficulty of my next attack by one. No, oh, well then it's difficulty one. Dead Eye means... and the completely blind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, which means uh, you guys are actually capped on momentum with one floating. Honey, should we... Okay, if I spend two of those momentum, including the floating one, to keep the initiative? Uh, you can uh, in one second. I need to know if uh, Rizazo is spending anything on penetration. Um, I'm going to actually spend the, the floating momentum to re-roll those dice, I think. Okay. Roll zero, cool. zero. My my overflow. Yeah, okay. that is enough to take out drone F. Now, with you aiming, could you because you aimed? Can you do the area effect? No, I'd have to have actually prepared. Yeah, yeah so I don't remember use how the that charge. Works. Yeah, so the minor action for everybody's phaser is you do a charge effect, and charge gives you either vicious one area or a uh, vicious one. Or oh, penetrating, or piercing yeah. one, or something like that. It's like I think that. it's it's on a handle. So, sorry, hand. sorry, I'm 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 still in wrath and glory mode. Nah, you're fine. Yeah, um, but I, I chose to aim, so I could re-roll if I snake eyed, mm -hmm. doubled in this case. But Ari would be a good choice for this. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, with uh, Rosazzo having taken out Drone F. Uh, I'm going to spend one more threat to make Drone B appear. And as soon as Drone B floats out, uh, it is going to open fire. All right, drones, come on. I need you to hit somebody. All right, very good. So, uh, Rizazo, uh you are going to take a grand total of three stress damage. However, you have a resistance of one from your EV suit, or I guess in your case, the EV spray. So you only take two stress. Uh, Porta Rocky Exterior resistance plus two against energy attacks. Then you don't care at all. <laughs> I feel bad now. <laughs> uh, the, 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 this is like one of the things is like Porta's specifically a pretty yeah. impervious to low powered phaser fire. Mm -hmm. That's why there was such a. That's why the one in the episode was such a big deal. The colonists couldn't actually hurt it really. Mm -hmm. and uh i'm also gonna spend some threat because you gave you guys gave me so many uh i'm gonna keep the initiative and have drone d open fire on a different target uh the good news is apparently it can't roll for crap and it misses completely so it's back to you players uh zeb would like to move to next to prayer and kind of like, we'll put his hand on his chest and push him into, like, cover, into, like, a nook. Mm -hmm. And take the uh, guard uh, action. Okay. It's been a while since I've uh, seen guards. Let me look that up. Uh, difficulty zero or one for an ally. Increase the difficulty of attacks. You or an, or an ally character by one. I guess that they mean attacks against you, but it's not worded like that. Right. Uh, this increases the difficulty... Okay, yeah. Uh, I will say until Preer goes again, uh, you have the benefit of that anything shooting Preer uh, is at an increased difficulty. Alright, so that's Zeb's action. And the only drone remaining is Drone C, and Drone C is going to see Zenixia uh, and open fire at her. Missing completely. Yeah, these, these guys, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, little drones. They're, they're not that great. Uh, but yeah, I think at this point, uh, Gorteg and Zenixia can both go because there are no more drones remaining. Yeah, uh, just double checking how these things interact. Cool. Uh, I think at this point. Yeah, by my reading of it, Swift Task, you can't get two minor actions. It's just an extra action. Yeah, so if it's, I believe it's one momentum for an additional minor, and Swift Task is a completely other action. Okay, well, that, that actually works better then. Gortag, you That's, were talking. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say uh, either Gort. I think Gortag was trying to say something. Uh, I was just going to simply do the same thing Rosazzo did and aim and then fire at one of the drones. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's have you roll first, and then we'll do Zenixia. Um. 
Daring security? Uh, control security. Unless you want to run up and melee one. I mean, maybe. He's a Klingon. We wouldn't be that surprised. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Oh, no, wait. You did aim, so you can reroll that zero. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. There we go. Very nice. You get a, uh, I believe you have a floating momentum. And yeah, go uh, ahead and roll me your damage on the phaser. Which is... For you, I believe much. an eight. Alright. And then... Uh, there we go. Wow. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, drone D uh, is dead. The D stands for dead. It explodes. Oh, it doesn't just explodes, it vaporizes. Yeah, like, in the TV episode, this is the bit where there's sort of a weird cut to the drone because they have, like, a special explosion special effect that they had to set up. But but that one's the only one that they could afford. Yeah. So that's why they have to zoom in on the really awesome explosion. Mm -hmm. Instead of somebody just dropping the model. <laughs> Oh dear. Alright, so Zenixia, uh, it will be your turn, and then there will be a fresh round of combat. Alrighty, so, uh, minor action to charge, uh, setting the phaser to area effect. Okay. Uh, spend, spend a momentum to aim. Okay. And then fire at drone B. Alrighty. And hopefully catch E in the blast. Alright. All right, security plus control. Control. Uh, you know, what? I'll spend another momentum as well to get three dice because her phaser skills are pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. No, oh, 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 okay, never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say. Apparently, they're very nice, and yeah, you guys are capped on momentum again. Alrighty. Uh, damage, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, which for her, I believe, is a four. And let me just check how the combat momentum sends work. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I'll spend a momentum to give the attack penetration. Okay. That's kosher. So you will ignore two resistance. Alright, and challenge dice are four for me, I think. Mm-hmm. Three for a type two phaser. Would you like to re-roll those zeros, those with, zeros the with the momentum? I would like to. Okay. That's better. That's much better. And because you've rolled effects as well, uh, yeah, Zenixia, you... Uh, push a few buttons on your phaser, set it to a wide area beam, and take careful aim. And sure enough, when you fire out, you hit both drone B and E, and they both go down. So they are... They're not vaporized. Like, it's not as cool as uh, what Gore-Tex just did. But hey, you uh, did take out uh, two drones at once. Something that the rest of the party cannot say they did. Now, uh, this is going to be a completely new round of combat, and Drone C is actually going to do what is essentially a kamikaze run. Uh, it is going to fly uh, directly at Zenixia, because, you know, Zenixia is the greatest threat at the moment. Um, so um, I'm just going to roll... Uh, I'm going to roll here for them. Okay, now Ooh, this, is, this is a hit. Uh, we're not going to use that damage because it is overloading. Uh, it's going to do a different amount of damage. Uh, specifically, oh dear. That's a bit. Uh, it is going to do five stress of damage. Uh, so you would take that to four resistance, or you would take it to four after resistance. Uh, but I am uh, going to spend I one threat so that it is enough for an injury. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that as Drone C literally explodes in Xenixia's face, that you guys are out of combat. Ready. 
Now, if I remember correctly, it's a case of you can sp spend a determination to stay up, but then if you get hit again, you're dead, dead. Right, you also and have a doctor. I was gonna say. So the good news is you're out of combat, so the doctor can come over and stabilize you. Um, so I, I, I'm happy to have like that Kamikaze hack basically just like knocks her over and leaves her completely dazed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah Doc, and heal. three yeah. stress left. Yeah, so Doc, that's gonna be a daring medicine, uh, difficulty one, please. I have emergency medicine, medicine, and I have xenobiology, and I have etymology. I think they would all apply. Yeah, like they all apply they here. All apply. And I'm, what? Did you say entomology? Etymology, which is the study of insects, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's funny that that's probably one of the most useful focuses playing in ELH's games, and none of us <laughs> thought about that. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that since I came in on Ophion. Ray! Only took until now for the insect to get damaged. Right. Nice. All right, so the good news is Zenixia, you will... Uh, Come round as the doctor treats your wounds, and yeah, you guys are capped on momentum again. Is there an aperture in which they were coming through the wall? Uh, yeah, Zeb, when you go to investigate, you see that nestled into the wall between the uh, statues, there are every so often these sort of circular openings that are the same size as the drones. So it's nothing you could crawl through, but it is enough to probably surmise that these tubules are where the drones came from. Sir, I found their, uh, their, their, their entrance of, um, into the, uh, room. Of room. Yeah. Uh, very well, Lieutenant. Uh, also scan them and set your tricorder to track those things. Maybe well, it'll we'll... give us an even further, uh, warning than just your motion sensor. Uh, if, if there's any of them left still non-vaporized, I'd like to pick it up, and once the Nixie is kind of stabilized, I'll hand it off to her to do her engineering thing on. Okay. In a minute, I am still seeing stars. But I'd like to attempt to uh, weld or fuse the apertures closed with my phaser. I will say that you're talking about about six or seven apertures, and, you know, now that you're you know what to look for. They're pretty regularly throughout everywhere here. Lame. Let us continue with the console. So it's sort of more like an extensive deployment network. Right. Mm -hmm. If we can disable them, then we do not need to worry about the apertures. Agreed. Alternatively, we finish thawing out that console and try and turn them off. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you are ready and not seeing stars, which, by the way, those are just the spots on Prayer's forehead. You, uh, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, checking out this console. Yep, so sort of regains her bearings and gets set up. All right. uh, oh, we still have to th right. finish thawing it out, though, don't we? No, you, you finished it right as the drones came rolling in. Ah. So the computer terminal, uh, as I said before, it is flickering. Uh, it does appear to be getting power from somewhere, but whether or not it's damaged or if the power is fluctuating, uh, it's anyone's guess at this point. And I would say that this console is maybe about the size of a standard work desk. Uh, so that's maybe about uh, five or six feet in length. Um, it's much bigger than the consoles that you would expect on Ophion. Uh, maybe about the same size as ones that you'd find on the Amalfia. And what you're noticing is that the script is not being translated by the Universal Translator at the moment. Hmm, that's an issue. Alright, let's try pressing buttons until we find something that looks like a power switch. Okay. Uh, roll me two challenge die, please. Alright. So the good news is, uh, as you're randomly pushing buttons, uh, nothing bad happens. And in fact, uh, through what's probably sheer coincidence, uh, when you press a certain button, a holographic display uh, illuminates above the console. 
and you see that it is an interior map of this structure, uh, almost completely uh, covering the entire size of the structure. And this map is highlighting your current position uh, with a little red pulsating dot. And you see that uh, throughout this labyrinth of uh, corridors that there's something very odd. And by that I mean, uh, if you want to know exactly how it's odd, I need you to roll me an insight engineering, please. Difficulty one. Alrighty. Yep. All right. So you do have a floating momentum, which you could use to ask a question. Uh, so by odd, what I mean is that there are massive open areas just beyond the walls, and there appear to be what are probably shutters or some form of airlocks that lead into these open areas. Hmm. With your question, you should ask what the, or in my opinion, you should ask where the power source for this place is on the map. No, that's not a silly idea, actually. So there that'll be the first question. Uh, does the map sort of label anything that looks like a power core? Uh, again, it doesn't translate uh, in Universal Translator. However, I will say that it does illuminate a particular uh, spot on the map, uh, maybe about a 10, 15 minute walk, uh, with a yellow glowing dot. Can someone describe the map to me? They, uh, that designed there this thing looks like it might be a power source. If we get yeah. there, we might be able to get this thing turned back on and running. Um, and just to help him out, I will like describe the map as best I can to Razaza. Mm -hmm. And I, I will throw in, I don't think the person who built this place had, uh, Porta's coming onto the ship in mind. Yes. Th I am thankful that the Amalthea's holograms display in the spectrum light that I can perceive. Uh, Zeb will download the map, or can he try to download the map to his uh, tricorder, or even take like a rendering of it that he can see? Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's pretty trivial for everybody to pull out their tricorders and sort of scan or download the map. Uh, but anything further would be an actual roll. Hmm. Well, I'm going to keep my phaser drawn anyway and monitor for more drones. So, which of us is going down to this core? What, was it not big enough for, like, is it down like Jeffrey's tubes type thing, or was it just down corridors? Oh, just down corridors. Okay. Then uh, I would say we continue to head that direction, and Rizazo and I will take point. Um, Zeb, you're on rear guard, and Zenixian Prayer in the middle. All right. Nothing's going to come up on me. So uh, you guys get to walking again, and as you proceed, uh, you know, using your map, as you proceed along, uh, you do notice those very same uh, windows slash shutters uh, that are almost like windows uh, uh, along the passageway. However, um, they are all frozen shut, so you're not able to see uh, beyond these shutters. And same token, uh, you do see additional airlocks. Uh, but again, those are also frozen shut. Um, and eventually, uh, as you guys are walking, you come to this area. So this area is a... Uh, I'll get your tokens there in a moment. Uh, this area is an even larger uh, open cavernous area than the one you originally, originally came into. Uh, this is what would be best described as a subterranean aquifer that is quite literally frozen in time. Uh, directly across from you is a waterfall frozen in mid-motion, and there are these great pillars of ice that rise up from the mostly solid water, and from within these columns are the glow of what could be the reactors 
or the power source that you are looking for. Hmm. Would take a pretty impressive event to freeze a waterfall in a bit of motion. I mean, it's certainly possible. But... And not even that. Uh, shouldn't these power cores be producing some kind of energy to prevent us ice from covering them? A little heat at the very least. Well, unless they are ridiculously efficient, but... Seems like this place's life support went crazy. Uh, I think or there I'm... was a shift in the station. I think I'm more awestruck at the fact that there is a subterranean aquifer inside of a ship. Where where's where is the water? Where's the water, where is the water, where is the water that mean, created the waterfall coming from? I mean, and Zenixia sort of just waves in general. We are sort of in the middle of a gigantic iceberg. With, that, the, with some sort of station or ship trapped inside of said iceberg. Well, trapped in or the ice was grown around it, sort of like a asteroid base but built in reverse. I'm not one for critical thinking here, but uh, with all them airlocks and all this water here, even if it's frozen, maybe it's some sort of aquatic species. Or once was. It's not a bad no. thought. Anyway, so, what are we going to do about these power cores? Well, let's see if we can't get some get them back up to full power. Okay. Maybe start thawing this place out a little. So... Uh, in order to get down and over to one of the pillars, uh, everybody who is going, I need another fitness con. Difficulty two, please. Would an infiltration focus work here? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately not. Uh, but if you have anything related to balance or acrobatics or athletics. Is it, um, um flat or is there like a slope? Uh, you quite li so kind of how the picture is. You guys are on that overlook to the left, so you have to hop down onto the ice, ice? and then traverse across the ice to the uh, pillars. Uh, you know what? With a fitness con of eight, I think Zenixia will just hang back. Except she's the engineer that needs to right. right. She's kind of needed. Uh, that's a good point. Um. Could I assist in helping her down? Could she ride and... me? Wow. <laughs> Phrasing? If if you hop on my I mean torso, they are I, I could I mean we are down. both wearing environmental suits, so we don't have to worry about sort of the sort of radiative heat from the horta causing any damage. I mean, the only real thing to worry about here is uh, starting up another romance with Chester's character. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's give it a go. And the next year I'll sort of like coil up on top of Rosazo and like clamp all four hands on tightly. This feels so weird. I love how we love formed how we... Mecca and it's, you know. It's not as weird as it is for me. <laughs> Mecca Shiva. Dad, Mecca Shiva. Formed the head. Oh, thank you, Walter. I was hoping someone would get it. Yeah, just sort of like yeah. curled up doing a best impression of a dragon on top of a pile of gold. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, it looks like everybody but Gorteg is able to hop down or ride uh, their way to a uh, pillar. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. Gorteg, uh, you know, you get, you know, five, ten steps out on the ice, and then all of a sudden the ice cracks underneath of you. And you go plunging into frigid water. Uh oh. I mean, environment suit, but still. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, damn. And I'll kind of, like, shuffle forward and try to attempt to help him. As will I. Okay. So I'm going to roll a challenge die for each of you. Uh, and if I roll an effect, uh, the ice begins cracking underneath you as well. Good news is that apparently the ice is a bit thicker here, so you're fine at the moment. Not quite the time for a, a swim, Commander. 
No, and uh, apparently my overeating, as my wife likes to put it, has come into negative effect. And he'll climb, with their help, climb his way out of the, the hole. Mm-hmm. And it's a good thing you uh, were so great at patching your suit earlier because had you not, that whole affair might have actually leaked some of the, the water or whatever it is into your suit. I would have literally frozen my ass off. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll scan Gorteg to just double check that he's all right. Okay. Uh, you know, other than his dignity as a Klingon, yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. Doctor, I'm 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 fine. Your patching of the suit has help has held. I hate ice. Maybe you should scan the water, Brer. That that was going to be my next thing. Scanning the water to see if it is actually water or a different compound. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason medicine or a reason science. Uh, difficulty three, please. Uh. I'm going to spend a moment for a third die. All right. Would I have a focus in xenobiology research, sensor operations? I would say sensor operations would apply here. All right. Uh, I will say I, that that can succeed at cost, but I will I take have cautious for- medicine. Oh, well, then re-roll that zero yeah. so with three successes uh, yes in fact this is your standard H2O uh, however there is a, a small amount of ammonia and uh, I'm trying to remember the, the proper compound for it um the long story short is that it is a water-based liquid, uh, but it has some interesting compounds that would suggest uh, some form of aquatic life or some form of perhaps bioengineering so that it doesn't freeze as readily. Well, good news, everybody. It is water, although interesting enough, water mixed with other compounds it's actually mixed with things that should in theory prevent ice forming especially to this degree i mean leave anything floating in space without power for long enough and it'll freeze now my third time stomach's got that tingling this isn't good is i forget is that better or worse oh it's worse much worse. Well, now that we took our dip, <clears throat> let's get over to them power cores, I guess. Alright. So, uh, you guys make your way over to one of the columns, and you see that, uh, as aforementioned, uh, there is what appears to be a reactor of some sort. Uh, the reason you can identify it as a reactor is because the uh, the glow of what could be either a uh, some form of reactor. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to not use the word reactor. Um, there is a regular glow uh, that does correlate with a spike in power. And at the same time, uh, you are able to, through your tricorders, uh, see that it is feeding a small amount of power into the surrounding uh, sort of power network. Um, but the problem is, is that the ice here is meters thick. Like if the column that you unfroze earlier was maybe one meter thick, we're talking more on the order of 10 to 12 meters here. Oh uh, man, this is... Mm. It's not going to be as simple. Could we just use a phaser on a higher setting? I was actually going to theorize a call to the Amalthia. Mm. Getting an engineering team in here with some tools, a couple of laser drills. Still going to take them a little bit, but uh, we can go faster. Hmm. 
uh, assuming we can actually reach them through all this ice. Yeah, so I would say that when one of you does try to reach the Amalthea, uh, you don't even get back to your shuttle. It's okay, that's a problem. Worse. <laughs> it's, um, hmm. Rizazo going to pull out his tricorder to see what everyone else is looking at and scan everything else around here. See if mm -hmm. there's some way we could kind of, like, weaken the ice to cause kind of a, a small cabin. Bring it up. Sure. Uh, roll me a insight security, please, Rizazo. Uh, difficulty three here. Insight security? Mm -hmm. But, uh, Structural engineering is a focus. Most definitely. Zeb is going to turn to Gortag and go, pretty sure I read a hollow novel that was just like this. I'm going to buy an extra dice with uh, with threats. I'm giving you a threat. Okay. Because when I do that, I can re-roll one die. Since I got three successes, that's good. But, you know, it's better than three successes. Four. My luck holds. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're back capped on momentum. And yeah, uh, actually, Rosazzo, uh, between your tricorder and your innate knowledge of uh, structural engineering, uh, you are able to determine that uh, a few maximum power phaser blasts at certain areas would cause a cascading shatter of the column that surrounds this reactor. If we target a phaser... <laughs> that quadrant there and there let gravity do its work it should pull it away the ice will be uh, more inclined to stick to itself than it will to the reactor and it will just splinter and shut off would recommend everyone pull back so we save distance back up sounds on like a plan lieutenant as long as I'm not underneath where that gravity is going to be doing its work. It's... I can point to where locations are, but someone else should take the shot. Because they can see the ice better than I can. Um, I guess I'll, Zeb will assist. Okay, yeah. so this Zazu is going... points out where in the, 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 via the tricorder. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll take the shot then. Okay, so this is going to be a difficulty 5, uh, complication range 3, uh, control and security. All right. That that was a big gulp. Um, no success, or no, no assist anyway. So, Gortag, do you want all six... Momentum for three extra dice. I need spending what? twenty threat. Um. <laughs> um uh, oh, and that's actually can, a complication from Zeb. So factor that in as well. Can I then, being this is kind of a group effort and everybody's kind of had an idea about how to deal with this, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to spend my determination to get two automatic successes. Mm -hmm. What's the value? A commander is only as good as his crew. Sure, why not? Um, and then... Gets me two. What is it? It's one for one dice, three for two dice. Your determination dice counts as one, so if you want two extra dice, it'll be five oh. momentum. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Um, uh, honestly, why not? I do it. Yeah, I'll dump all five momentum. All right. Is that the is that the biggest momentum spin we've ever had? Close to. I think we've. It's hot. Have we done six or seven before? Not that I can think of. So that will get me. Four uh, you dice will still be though. rolling four die. Yeah. Okay. But I already have two successes in the bank. Correct. Mm -hmm. And a complication. <laughs> Well, nice. I mean, you can roll like that. So that's six, seven, eight. Uh, so you get a grand total of three momentum back. Uh, do you want to buy off the complication with momentum? Yes, please. All right. So you go back down to two momentum. 
All right, so uh, Gortag and uh, Zeb, you take careful aim and open fire. And after a moment, uh, your directed phaser fire causes cracks within the ice column. And as you sort of disengage the beam and step back even further, uh, these cracks begin to splinter and sort of spiderweb across the entire column. And after another moment or two, you hear just the shattering, uh, almost like glass, as the ice just begins uh, shredding itself and falling away from the reactor. However, uh, as this whole process is going on, uh, Zeb, you notice that there are, or there is further movement, and from somewhere on the ceiling high above you, uh, in the darkness, uh, descends another four drones. Damn, got contact, Commander. And, uh, before we do this, uh, let's take our five to ten minute break. So, uh, we'll be back in five to ten minutes, guys.
Alrighty, so we are back, and uh, we're going to start uh, right in the middle of combat. So, uh, I'm going to say that one of you guys can go first, uh, but then it will be the drone's turn. Well, uh, since Xenixia only has three stress left, uh, can she go first and get behind cover? You certainly may. Uh, I will say that uh, the terrain of this area is such is that you could find uh, some spire of ice or a otherwise sort of it's it's a meme, but if you find a chest high wall, you could probably hide <laughs> behind it. Yeah, so I'm thinking like Xenixia just like drops down full prone and just like all four arms just goes skating across the ice and just slithers into the nearest piece of cover she can find okay so i'm going to say that you have two challenge die worth of cover and i'm going to give you let's see i know there's a shield mark here somewhere uh there we go that way i'll remember all right uh would you like to do so that would be your minor to move would you like to do anything well, for your me. action um I will say, if you took the guard action, it would be a difficulty three to hit you. Yeah, let's go with that. All right. So, uh, with Zenixia scurrying behind cover, uh, are you guys retaining the initiative or no? Uh, we don't have. We only got two momentum left, but yeah, I don't. I know I don't have. Um, yeah, I don't quick have it either. Okay. Then what's going to happen is uh, Drone A is going to go, and I'm going to spend some threat so that if this hits, this will be an area attack. And sure enough, uh, it is not only an area attack, but a very devastating one. Um, okay, those aren't effects. Good. So, uh, Preer, Gorteg, Rizazo, and Zeb, you're all going to take four damage before reduction from resistance. Uh, so remember that your suit provides one resistance, and Rosazo, since you're a Horda, I believe you're a total of three resistance, so you only yeah. take one. Um, so what immediately occurs to you as this sort of area laser splashes across all of you is that this is a much higher powered laser than before, uh, almost like it's responding to an escalating threat. And if that wasn't bad enough, I'm going to spend more threat so that Drone B can do the exact same thing. Good news is that it misses completely. And it is the player's turn again. Zeb would like to... Um, I'd like to um, move into some cover with my movement. Okay. And then assist Gorteg. No, assist Raza with his next attack. Okay. So uh, that will be your action, and you as well will have the benefit of cover. Do, 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 do. All right. So just remember that Razazo, uh, when he rolls, you will be assisting him. Uh, however, uh, that will be the player's turn. So drone C. Again, I'm going to spend quite a bit of threat so that it can do another area attack. Boop. Misses completely. Alright, so uh, player's turn again. Zazo? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll... Uh, minor action to go to area. Okay. That's the best thing, and I'll buy rather than aiming, and... Um... Buy an extra dice with bold. Okay. Or uh, for bold with from threat. I, I roll to assist him, right? Yes. Uh, you're oh. going to be rolling a control security of your own to assist him. All right. So that gets you two momentum from that roll. And yeah, Rosazo, if. Uh, well, it looks like you rolled science. Let's see if it has been a crit. Really did. Uh, yes, well, one of those. Anyway, so it didn't matter. Well, one of those would have been a crit, so you actually get three momentum. Oh, good idea. So yeah, go ahead and roll me some damage. All right. So yes, uh, would you like to take out drone C and D or drone A and B? 
Um, clarify that first. Uh, I'd go. I'd have gone for B. With my pack tactics, whenever I assist another character during combat, that character you assist gains one bonus momentum if they succeed. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I don't think there's any need for a bonus momentum, because with 9 damage, uh, even with their small resistance, that's enough to take them down. Uh, so these are no more. In fact, I'm going to say that uh, very similarly to Gorteg earlier, uh, you quite literally vaporize them. There is nothing remaining. Not bad for someone without eyes. Mm -hmm. Haha, that was a joke. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, in that case, uh, the only drone remaining is Drone D, and Drone D is going to do another area attack. Uh, missing completely. And if that wasn't bad enough, I'm going to spend uh, almost the remaining threat that I have, so I will literally only have two remaining after this, to drop another four drones on you, because why not? Uh, but it is the player's I mean, turn. There. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to do, was area on the four-door right here. Okay. Z, D, H, and I. So yeah, it will and. take your miner to charge so that you do area. And yeah. Sounds good. Alright. Um, and control security, right? Yep. We are sitting at five momentum if you would like another die. Uh, I will take a third dice, yes please. Nice. Very nice. You get a momentum right back. Um, and I'll spend that momentum I just got back on um, piercing. Okay. And uh, phasers three plus my security, so a lot. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, I will say that if you do at least one more damage, you will take out that entire group. Then how about we spend a momentum and I will re-roll those three zeros. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So, uh, you know, gore you see almost the writing on the wall, uh, as it were. And before the newly arrived drones can start firing at you, uh, you set your phaser to the widest area possible and fire into the middle of them, and you take out that entire pack of four drones, no problem. Um, so the only ones remaining at this point uh, are drone F and G, and I'm going to spend my last threat so that drone F can do an area attack. So after this, I have no more threat. Okay, uh, so uh, because uh, you guys used your miner or haven't acted yet in the case of Preer, uh, this will be hitting Rosazo, Gorteg, and Preer. Uh, good news, bad news. Uh, bad news first, uh, they do have Vicious 1, so that unfortunately is 5, 6, 7 stress damage. And uh, remember, your resistances... So, Rizazo, I believe you take four stress. Uh, Gorteg, uh, I believe you take six. And Preer, you also take six. And this is very important, because uh, that's already one injury. Uh, do any of you run out of stress because of that attack? I do. You do. Preer does. Uh, um, I need to double check. How does that um, interact with Xenixia's cover? Uh, so Xenixia and Zeb are fine. Like, you guys moved away okay. from the group into cover. Um, so unfortunately for Preer, what's going to happen is uh, your first injury uh, will be non-lethal, but the second injury as it comes in turns that into a lethal injury, meaning if you are not stabilized by the end of this scene, or unless you spend determination to stay up... Um, I believe that you are uh, going to die, unfortunately. So somebody needs to get over and stabilize Prayer. Okay, uh, right. No pressure. Let's see which of us actually has any medical. Uh, but the other bad news is that because Prayer is incapacitated, uh, he does not get his turn, which means that uh, up next is Drone G. 
Now, of course, I don't have enough to spend uh, for an area attack, so Drone G is simply just going to fire at Rizazo. And misses completely. All right. Um, so question. Yes. Uh, I took six points of stress, which means that's an injury because I took over five, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, so then I need to... Uh, I would like to try to avoid... Uh, av take the avoid an injury uh, roll. Okay. Um, I have the tough talent. Um, so I don't remember what that roll is, but the cost to do it is reduced by one to a minimum of one. One momentum. Yeah, so it would be one momentum. Okay. So I spend one momentum and I stay up. Yes, and the difference is, as uh, I double-checked uh, the other day, uh, literally on Kairos, if you spend the momentum to avoid the injury, uh, it's not like a determination where, uh, you know, if you determinate and stay up, it's then that you uh, start to run the risk of being vaporized. Um, Which is... For the momentum spend is the one that if I ignore it, the next time it happens, I'm just dead. Uh, yes, if you if or you the other way around, the determination spend is yes. Um, okay. Now the caveat to that is that you only get to avoid an injury with the momentum spend once per scene, uh, which means that even if uh, you get injured again, you cannot even use your determination uh, to stay up. Okay. So, I mean, either way, I can only do one or the other once, and then that's it. Mm hmm Okay. Well, if you spend your determination, you can act despite being injured, and then if you get injured again, you can spend the momentum to just negate that second one. Okay. That, that very, you'd have to already okay. be injured. Either Better way, I think our priority now needs to be getting Puria within beaming distance of the shuttle. I mean, yeah. that or, you know, taking his medical kit and doing what you can. Um, but it is the player's turn. This is a fresh round of combat, so uh, any of you, well, aside from Priya, unfortunately, can act. Uh, does in does anyone have a medicine better than two? I have a one. I've got a two. <laughs> Human anatomy is foreign to me. <laughs> I'm dead. Um, um, medicine would be... Uh, would it be inside or daring under combat conditions? Uh, it is a daring medicine at a difficulty of one to stabilize prayer. Oh, I'm, I've only got a daring of eight, so if you've got a daring higher than that... I do have a daring higher than uh, eight. I've got a daring of nine and a medicine of two. I think it's free pack. Or, uh, zip. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I have the same score with a daring of 10 and a medicine of 1, but yeah, either way. Either way. Alright, so which one of you is doing the uh, rush over to first aid, I guess is the question. You want to flip for it? Uh, no, I'll just do it. Okay. Alright, All right, so Gortag, daring medicine, difficulty 1. Feel free to use momentum. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I will. I'll spend one momentum to get a third die. Okay. Um, no, better yet, I will spend our other momentum and one threat to get two dice to make sure I actually stick this friggin' roll. All righty, all righty. <laughs> um, applicable focus. Do you Composure? have emergency medicine? No, I do not. Then, unfortunately, no focus for you. Okay. Well, it's a good thing you bought those think. additional die. Uh, so, yeah, you do get one momentum back. And, Prier, you're stabilized. Um, you have the option of spending uh, the momentum and a threat to rejoin combat. But, otherwise, you're just sort of stabilized. And you'll wake up when the combat is over. I'll stick with stabilized. Okay. And the other benefit of that is that in order to target uh, a character that is injured and out of combat, it costs threat to do it, which I don't have any at the moment. So, mm -hmm. so. Um, um, so uh, I, I think now is as good a time as any to start beating a hasty retreat. 
I mean, there's only two left. And we for now. <laughs> and we just got the power thing exposed, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I because I was gonna say I would love to assist someone with call out targets so that way they could, you know, kill those last two. I'll shoot the last two. Well, uh, before that happens, Next, when, when we can. Yeah, before that happens, it is the drone's turn. So drone F is going to fire at Gorteg because you know it sees you as an opportune target. Uh, it will hit you, and this again is going to be very interesting because that is five damage uh, reduced by one to a total of four damage. So I believe that does take over your stress ta uh, stress nope. track. It leaves me at one. Well, there you go. You you have one stress remaining. And yeah, now it is the player's turn again. Don't these drones know you never attack doctors? You never I mean, screw with the white mage. Healing. The EDs tell me anything. Um, so yeah, if uh, Zeb, if you want to shoot, I'll, I'll assist. Um, you said last time it was reason and, reason and command? Uh, presence and command. Presence. Uh, that's better for me anyways. I'm only assisting, so it's one. Applicable focus, lead by example again? Yeah, uh, so you do need to roll a success here, unfortunately. Otherwise, Zeb will miss. Nope. Yeah, so Zeb, uh, you fire your phaser at one of the drones, and it just sort of weaves out of the way. And the complication is is that uh, your phaser begins emitting a very high-pitched whine, almost as if uh, you put a little too much power, and now it's starting to overload. I'm having the antifreeze. Right. All right, so I will say Zeb uh, is that at the end of your next turn, if you do not get rid of that phaser, it is exploding in your face. I know exactly what I'm doing with it. Now I will also say you could attempt a daring engineering to fix it, but you know the best bet is probably dumping it somewhere. Um. But before that happens, uh, Drone G is going to open fire at Rosazzo. And miss completely. So, uh, Rosazzo and Zenixia, uh, whichever one of you would like to go next. Ready. Uh... All right, I guess uh, Zenixia will aim for the nearest drone and fire. Okay. Actually, why doesn't uh, Rosazzo fire and Zenixia can see if she can shut them down? Zenixia seems like the engineer person. Oh, like uh, sort of come up with some sort of pulse to scramble their senses. Yeah, shut them down, Go to the get to the console, do something. Engineery. Alright, so yeah, Z Zenixia will sort of look at how they're sort of floating around and like take a guess at what sort of senses they use and then try to blind them. All right, I will say that that would be an insight engineering, and the difficulty would be a three. All righty. Spend a momentum to get a third die. Alien engineering is a focus. Mm -hmm. And you get there the we three go. you need. Uh, so, Zenixia, this does take your turn, uh, but what you realize is that, uh, ironically, uh, if you were to somehow coach yourself uh, in a infrared uh, light source, that uh, the drones would be unable to see you. Of course, you'd be a beacon to Rizazo, but the drone sensors would be otherwise overwhelmed. So, Zenixia will sort of go, okay, I wait to call the folks uh rosazo uh cover your uh, j just uh, never mind and just <laughs> pulses the infrared burst okay um so what i'll say for this is if you give me two threat i will allow you to do a swift task to attempt the infrared burst Ooh. Ooh, that's a tough one Now, I, I think I'll hold off and not do it this turn, ju just because threat means Priya might potentially get hit. Fair. All right. In that case, Rosazzo, it is your turn. All right. Uh, not aiming. Switching to area. 
I, I, I will, uh, I'll be the deck and give you a threat for the third die. Okay. Hopefully it won't. I hit science this time. I, I caught myself. Very nice. You gain uh, two momentum from that. And yeah, roll me some damage. Nice. Alright, and that is... I'm going to spend one of my newfound momentum to re-roll those three zeros. Okay. Take them out. All right. I will say if you do one more point of damage, you'll get rid of them both. Um, yep, yeah, penetrating. All right. So you don't get any uh, momentum then because you spend it all. But the good news is uh, with another area attack from Rosazzo, the drones that are here go down and you guys are out of combat. And untap potential to momentum. Oh, Very nice. Which I forgot earlier. And yeah, so uh, Gortek, you're not feeling great. Uh, Prier, you're starting to come around. And yeah, carry on. So that was a little rough. Order is going All right. Uh, let's continue to find out what we can with this control panel. And... Uh, doctor, just, just, yeah, just don't move. Um, find out what we can about this control panel, find everything we can about this thing, and then we need to get out of here. I will cover you. Stay, I will stay behind me. I will be Rocky Shield. All right, the next year will sort of go to and try and figure out what the deal with this console is. All right. So, uh, you know, it's another untranslated console, but you do notice that there are three buttons. And, ironically oh enough, God. they are color-coded. There is a red button, there is a yellow button, and there is a green button. Hmm. I'm going to go with the yellow button. Good choice. That was the one my stomach was saying was good. Uh, my, my logic is going as this area was a yellow area on the map, so that's the connection I'm got. And sure enough, your instincts are correct. Uh, when you push the yellow button, there's almost a cacophony of sound as the other pillars uh, that contain other reactors, uh, the ice shatters away as the reactors begin to hum to life. And you can almost feel the amount of power and the amount of energy that these things are generating as uh, they begin to spool up. And you hear uh, beneath of you that as these things heat up, that the ice you're standing on probably isn't going to hold you for much longer. Time to go. Uh, I will scoop up prayer and uh, start making our way out of this room. Okay, so this is going to be another fitness con, a uh, difficulty two. And Gorteg, because you are carrying Preer, uh, <sighs> your difficulty is a three. <sighs> All right, so Zeb does not succeed. Zenixia makes it. I feel I should have to try to make this one as well. Since I'm trying to get up a ledge. Yeah, I was going to say, Rizazo, <laughs> because you have to get up a ledge, you will actually have to roll here. Uh, you want one of our momentum. Ooh. All right, For my complication, I want to have fallen backwards and landed on my back and be unable to get back over. I, I think I that's going to be exactly what the complication is. Um, I... Uh... Shoot, I kind of want to give him threat so I can have th four dice, but... Uh, you do have two momentum. Right, but that's what I was saying, of using both of them and give you one threat to give me four dice instead of three. Ah. But I'll just use one momentum for a third dice. Okay. And I, I'm i sure I don't have a focus, so... Who's holding prayer? I am. 
Oh, the one who can't walk on ice for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, thank heavens. Apparently you can today. <laughs> so, uh, Zenixia, Gorteg, and Prier, uh, the three of you are able to make it back to the ledge and clamber on up, uh, even with Gorteg carrying Prier. Uh, however, uh, Zeb, you make it about halfway when the ice around you begins to crack. And I'm going to roll challenge die for you. Ah, uh, damn. And yeah, sure enough, you go into the water. Uh, Rizazo, uh, your complication, as you said, is you get about halfway up the ledge when you lose traction and fall backwards onto your back. Uh, and you are sort of flailing, uh, unable, sort of like a turtle if you flip yeah. them over. It's a turtle. Oh, I, I, I was it's thinking more like a power trying to right itself while it's held upside down. Yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, and yeah, uh, the good news is that uh, you don't fall into the water, but the ice does begin to crack around you. This is embarrassing. Please do not tell the captain. <laughs> if I die from this, please tell them it was the drones. <laughs> I just sit there with all these little silly of flailing and flailing away madly. Uh, can I run back in to I uh, flip Rosazo over? Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that this is uh, if you flip Rosazo over, that is a fitness security. If you try to fish out Zeb, that is going to be a fitness con. Okay. Um. Well, Zeb's probably in the worst danger right this second so i, I will I'll... have also tossed the phaser but you know before we have left good i'm glad you remembered right <laughs> um then i'll try to grab uh zeb first um uh fitness and con mm -hmm. uh difficulty three again <sighs> but the good news is if you succeed both you and zeb will make it to safety um i'll spin another uh Momentum. Okay. And I'm sure no applicable focus is unless you're going to let me have hand-to-hand -hand combat for grappling. Sure, why not? <laughs> Alright. Uh, of course not. Okay. Uh, I will say this can succeed at cost, but there will be a complication. Zeb's uh, hair gets messed up. Uh, sure. All right, and that complication shall be that yeah, uh, as you uh, you know fish Zeb out and you get him to safety, the ice continues to crack around Rosazzo, and there's probably maybe all of five seconds before he falls into the water, which would be very bad for a Horda. So I okay. will say that all of you together have one action before the ice under Rosazzo will shatter. Um, Commander, and I'll point at Rizazo. Uh I would like to run back to get Rizazo. Okay. I just like made him slide on our stomachs across the ice to grab him. I will say if you give me two threat because you don't have two momentum, uh, I will say that you can assist each other, uh, almost like you have created an advantage. I have small unit tactics. That would apply. Focus. Well, it is very cold in this room, so. Uh. Haha. Uh -huh. Um. I'm okay. Ooh. What are we rolling? Uh, keeping you're rolling a fitness and security because you need to flip Rosazzo and get him up the ledge. I'm sitting there flailing away. Ice is cracking around me. Not like this. I do not wish to be yard. Nice. You're not going out today, Mr. Little Lasagna. I'm not losing I any of my Rizazo. Get up here. Very nice. And yeah, uh, you actually get a momentum from that. And yeah, between the two of you, uh, you're not only able to flip Rizazo and get up the ledge, but not a moment too soon as uh, where you just were uh, sh uh, basically cracks and opens up and... This entire area uh, has begun to unthaw. Even the waterfall has begun to cascade back down. But you all are in safe. Uh, you all are safe, and mostly, uh, no worse for the wear. 
all right, let's get back in range of the shuttle and like back off to a safe distance while this place thaws out. So, uh, actually, the defawing process happens much faster than you would think. Uh, by the time you reach the original console where you got the map from, uh, you actually see something similar to this. And uh, to sort of describe what you're seeing is that the grand open corridors, uh, the windows that you saw before, uh, actually are now unfrosted and you're able to see beyond. And sure enough, as you probably guessed earlier, uh, they open up into great expanses of water, and you see all sorts of life swimming within them, uh, ranging from uh, smaller what could be fish to uh, larger creatures. And as you're sort of looking around, uh, you realize that something is coming towards you uh, on the other side of the window. And what you see is this. Uh, it is a, a jellyfish-like uh, creature that appears to have uh, what could be some form of a torso or arms in addition to uh, the usual jellyfish tendrils. Uh, it is largely uh, see-through, but you are seeing almost bioluminescent uh, red veins that go throughout this creature's body. And uh, this creature, whatever it is, uh, it comes up to the glass and... Strangely, uh, Xenixia, you hear something in your mind, and, and the creature says, who might you be? And Xenixia will sort of like hold up her hands to the rest of the party and sort of go over to the glass, put a hand on to sort of look at... Ah, uh, visitors, essentially. Is this your station? This is our station, yes. How long have we been frozen? Ah, uh, that I couldn't say. Um, I am Specialist Xenixia of the USS Amalthea, and we picked up the transmission coming from the station. Came to investigate. Very well. In that case, I will proceed through the airlock to converse with you directly. And, uh, and you see that... Yeah, and yeah. as she is, um, just to double check, uh, you can breathe in air, right? It doesn't answer, uh, but you do get an answer uh, as it moves to one of the airlocks, cycles through, and it begins to quite literally float in the air uh, as it leaves the airlock. Uh, every once in a while, sort of doing that poofy motion that jellyfish do to stay aloft. Um, and its thin uh, tendrils sort of linger beneath of it. And now that it is in air and not water, uh, all of you can hear this. And the creature says, You are strange. You are not aquatic. Well, ain't that something? Uh, no, we are not. Uh, I am Commander Gorteg of the USS Amalthea of the... Um, United Federation of Planets. Um, we are essentially stranded out here and came across your station and came to investigate. So the creature uh, floats over to one of the consoles along the wall uh, and its arms uh, move and tap at the console. And obviously it doesn't really have a face, uh, but it does sort of uh, hover and float there for a little bit and says, I see... We have been frozen for approximately two centuries. That is... not good. Uh, question. Have you encountered a drone-like species in this area of space? Uh, yes, that yes. would be the caretakers, yes. Caretakers. This word is foreign to me. However, if it is the same species that uh, plagued us then I believe that we are in great danger, for that these drones tried to wipe out my species. To my knowledge, uh, this station and all of its inhabitants were the only ones that escaped the purge of our homeworld. They actually attacked homeworlds, not just base-faring vessels? Correct. We uh, have found them. One second, second, let me call up a schematic and Xenixia will sort of like 
bring up a schematic of like the caretaker drones that we met like this yes like those yeah. okay good so at least we're not dealing with the borg well are you familiar with another species uh called the marissa and, and the marissa i was going to say the merfolk and i knew that was wrong um uh, a species known as the marissa the marissa one moment it uh, taps at the console and sure enough a holographic display of a marissa pops up uh, are you referring to this species yes yep. yes then yes we are aware of their planet and its location we have run mm -hmm. into them previously and that is where we first came into conflict with these caretakers I see. And are is the area safe? Um, the area safe around... Ish. Yes. As my friend here has said, the area around their homeworld is more safe than it was before we came. Then we will transition this station so that it may share the protection that is provided. And Zidig is sort of lean over. Uh, quick question: How good is our sensor scrambling net? I do not know. I was, I was, as far as I was aware, it, was, it just masks. You know, it, it makes everything in there not visible to their sensors or or lo technology locating apparatus. It essentially creates a, like a noise that prevents them from scanning. A certain AU throughout the uh, from where it's positioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, uh, Gortek is going to try to um, communicate with the Amalthea, with the captain. All right, and actually, yeah. Now that everything's defrosted, you get a clear signal back to Captain Murthran. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gortig, Mothran here. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Captain. Captain. Uh, it seems that what we've done has made us be able to communicate with you. We have found another uh, water-faring species. Uh, this station seems to be, well, mostly water. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, we, we saw the power spike just a, a few minutes before... Um, so what's the situation over there? Uh, well, as far as the away team goes, uh, Dr. Prayer is seriously injured, myself somewhat as well. Um, but we have made first contact with this species. They are aware of the caretakers, and they don't like them either. Um, after a short discussion, they are going to translocate their station to the Marissa homeworld, or, or around it. Around. There's a slight pause. Now, when you say translocate... I don't know how it moves. Uh, it's above my pay grade. Uh, I can ask. Uh, proceed. Um, and I'll turn back to the... Uh... uh jelly creature in front of me the jellyfish mm -hmm. in front of me um when you say you are going to move your station how how is it propelled we are able to open an aperture into slip space and transition through that aperture however this process draws heavily upon our energy reserves we are only able to perform this action twice more before our stores of energy will be depleted hmm I how relay long, that to Mirthrin. I want to ask him, how long is this fancy hole of yours open for? It is open for approximately 30 seconds. I kind of just look over at the Gore-Tag. Uh, seems like enough time to get another couple ships through. Especially if they are within Central Ring. It does. Um, would we... And I'll, I'll turn my attention back to the um, the person speaking with us. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to bring the two ships that we have with us along your aperture? 
Yes, I believe that it is the least we could do. You are rather far from whatever fares for home. Excellent. Um, we can... Uh, if your ability to do this uh, mimics our own, then having the coordinates for where we are going would probably be a very good thing for you, correct? Correct. Um, then if you allow me to take um, my team back to our ship, we can send those coordinates over and um, assume a, um, a bearing to follow you through. Very well. And on behalf of my people, the Ashram, thank you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Gorteg will kind of chuckle. It is nice to be appreciated so far from home. Right. And uh, Gorteg will um, kind of like bow his head as a, you know, leaving the immediate area and lead the team back to the shuttlecraft. Okay. And on the way back, uh, you do encounter more of the Ashram. Uh, they are mostly uh, content to sort of float around you, uh, but you make it back to the shuttle, no problem. Sort of like all coming out as the station sort of wakes up out of cryo sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I'll put everybody back on the shuttle and then I'll fly the shuttle back to the Amalthea. And then um, uh, I will drop prayer. I will personally take prayer to the sick bay unless obviously a medical team meets us mm -hmm. just uh before we can leave and everything but before we've left since mm -hmm. prayer is kind of busy being you know half dead i'll take a couple of scans with his tricorder of these uh people for him to look at later nice yeah, that's a good idea yeah, um, no we would have wanted it well, and, I, and i should say prayer is and, conscious prayer can't I'm, talk yeah i'm conscious i'm just no, 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 really bang. You're, you're you're unconscious. You you can't talk. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, hassle no. yourself. I got it. Um. Oh, uh, getting ourselves the beginnings of a gamma alliance here. Um, but yeah, once we get back, uh, I will make sure prayer is taken care of by medical team, and I will completely ignore my injuries to go talk to the captain immediately. Okay. Zeb kind of gives everybody a nod and a quick cowboy salute and then transports back over to the Ophion. Under that. All right. And, so... and Rosazzo gets a high five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Captain Merthyn, you're in your ready room when uh, you get a chime at your door. Come in. And in steps Mr. Gorteg. Who looks very worse for the wear. So, uh, 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 apparently you have some new friends. Apparently. They, um, they also know of the Marissa. Um, apparently this uh, species and what's on that station is all that's left after their homeworld was destroyed by the caretakers. Hmm. The more and more I hear of the past of this species known as the caretakers, the less and less I think they are actually caretakers. Well, the thing that I find really curious is that clearly they were a massive threat, threat at one point, so... and nothing could stop them, so why did they stop? That's a good question. Unfortunately, um, we don't really know I don't know if we know anyone that could be able to answer the question. I mean, have we asked the Marissa? Uh, the Marissa don't have have a very limited outlook on the situation. I mean, from what we hear, they came to this part of space about four or five hundred years ago, and by the time they were ready to move out into space, the caretakers were already there to stop them. Yes, and this, um, I just completely lost it. What was the name of this species we just met? Uh, that would be the uh, Ashram. Be the Ashram. Ashram. Well, Captain, the Ashram, as the species identified itself to us, is, says that they, according to their computers, have been frozen the way we found them for over 200 years. So mm -hmm. I, I would assume it's safe to, to guess that 
uh, their homeworld was destroyed around the same time. Or at least they made their escape around the same time. Uh, hopefully they can fill in a few gaps for us on exactly what the caretakers are. Yes. Um, we did show them a... Um, what we are referring to as the caretakers, and they did identify that this was the species that um, effectively wiped out their species. Or at least mm -hmm. the drones. Curiouser and curiouser. Um, to make it even more curiouser, curious. To make things even worse, better? A anyways, uh, the Ashram have the ability to effectively QSD or have a QSD. Well, the, you mean they have a QSD ship? Apparently, the station can move at those speeds. Did every species in this galaxy invent QSD before the Federation? Uh, I would remind you, Captain, that the Klingons did not even think about working on this type of technology. We are still using ships that are three or more hundred years old. Okay, okay, fair point. So, if you were the last, then we are not even in the running. Point taken. All right, well, I mean, I'm not going to say no to, to a shortcut. We're still a good three weeks out from Suethia. Um, we, we did ask, uh, and I'm sure you've been able to tell, we can probably pull both ships uh, into the middle of the space, in the middle of the station and ride through the slipstream in, in that manner. Mm. That's probably need to coordinate back with the other ships to make sure we don't uh, arrive in the path of anything, but yeah. I mean, having an entire station, uh, an entire functional station to incorporate into the sensor scrambling net would certainly help. True, and it would also give the Marissa another platform to defend themselves with, as well as the Ashram. Hmm. I, mean, I, mean, uh, I shake my head, Captain, at the fact that we've come all this way to find two species that are completely aquatic that aren't on the same planet, that are two in two vastly different areas. But, huh, maybe it's the water. And Gortego kind of like scratch his his goatee. Maybe those are questions we could ask the Marissa or the Ashram. If these caretakers seem to prey on species that are aquatic, maybe that's a clue. Possibly. I mean, we're still waiting on the uh, science team working on the. No, wait, no, that drone was from a different thing altogether. Now, we do have people working on the remains of a caretaker drone, right? GM? You do. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, so, yeah, we've still got the science team working on the remains of the caretaker drones. Like, maybe we could look at that angle, see if there's a, anything in their makeup that relies on, an, uh, relies on a specific water-soluble compound. Maybe. It's, it's just a thought, and to be completely honest, uh, between you and me, Captain, and I would hope you don't spread this, I'm in a lot of pain. So, so if uh, I am addled at this moment, I apologize. You should say prayer about that. Prayer has its own problems, Captain. Oh, right, yes, yes. But I will, with your leave, not take up my duty station, and I will head to sickbay. Very well. Uh, debrief in your own time. Of course, Captain. And 
Um, hopefully, hopefully everything works out. Yep, and I guess as Gortig heads out the door, Mirthrin sort of turns back to his desk and, desk and sort of digests all this new info. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, you know, we can uh, actually play it out if you would prefer, but uh, I would say that uh, it's fairly trivial for you guys to coordinate with the ashram to get your little fleet together and uh, coordinated with the station if you so wished do we, how far away is the ashram homeworld do they know uh, uh, if you ask them they give you a set of coordinates that is approximately 60 light years distance is it on the route or away away like how long is that at like warp 6 or warp 9 to get to the Ophion could go investigate with its QSD if you'd like. True. Well, let's uh, let's find out. So, sixty light years. Uh, we'll assume a warp of nine point five. How many days? Uh, it would take approximately eleven and a half days to travel that distance at warp. At warp. Eh, not too bad. It's Ophion has 775 light years of QSD uh, in my left. Well, may, may, maybe we hold out on that and like come back to that once we've did, did, got a setup. Because our next port of action, once the Amalthea is back, is we have to find a planet to put those Romulans on before they take over the fleet. Right, and it could be a good Ophion centric episode if we need. Mm -hmm. Yep. We don't even know if the Marissa, you, you know, from a diplomatic angle, if they're going to even want to share anything. I mean, I this is a good point, them. actually. They're, I mean, they, they, they weren't even really open to the Bajorans, you know? Yeah. Calling ahead might be a good idea. Yep. So Letting them know, hey, up and say, fun. hey, do you know, remember a species of jellyfish? For now, I think we should just move them into the into the safety net of the sensor. I mean, safety of the sensor net. Yeah, I mean, the worst case scenario, they do have one more jump after this, so... Right. Mm -hmm. And if they need to move, we can move them. Find them an adequate area, something like that. Maybe, like, a nice pulsar that will emit enough energy to block caretaker sensors. All right. Well, with all these lovely ideas, we'll wrap up the session by saying that uh, the Amalthea and the Ophion and the Mayuan, uh, you all sort of get alongside or maybe inside the hollowed out area of the station. And almost like a Death Star laser, uh, there are points of light beams that shoot out from the station and they coalesce and uh, connect at a point ahead of the station and they widen open and literally tear a hole into slip space large enough for the station. And uh, the station and your little fleet go into the aperture and you appear back at Suetha. And that's where we'll call the session. So, Alrighty, so. Uh, this is where I'll end the stream. So uh, anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube or listening in on uh, Podbean or uh, iTunes, thank you so much. And we will see these guys next week. Bye-bye.